would ever want to uh, or would ever bail out country G2? Would, it, would they want to? Would the taxpayers in country G1 um, ever bail out the people in G2? So, so think about that, if you were a citizen of G1. Or if you knew a little history, you'd say, well, I know what he's talking about. G1 is West Germany, and G2 is East Germany. And of course, they did bail them out. So in 1990, so what I'm talking about is everything I said about country G2 is true. East Germany is like a uh, very weak currency. It was, uh, it was uh, terrible labor market institutions, terrible inefficiencies. People hadn't worked for, you know, very bad work ethic. Um, a currency, the black market rate was like eight or nine to seven, eight, nine to one vis-a-vis -vis the West German mark. And what happened is the West Germans completely bailed out the East Germans. They bailed out the currency one to one. So if you hold, held those East German marks, you made a fortune. Um, and the West German taxpayers bailed them out completely. Why? What was the deal? Oh, constitutions are restructured to give central governments more control over state. Oh, the East Germans completely abandoned their constitution. It got ripped up, and West German institutions, social safety net, tax system, labor market institutions are completely um, put in. So there was, there was a bailout, but it was a big quid pro quo. OK, so that's as personal as I'm going to get. There's another G1 and another G2 you could think about. And you could think about the quid pro quo for there. Um, and I'll come back to talk about that in a little bit. OK. <clears throat> so this is getting too, too close and too personal. So I'll, I'll talk about my own country. OK. OK, so, okay, so one thing I want to say is um, fiscal crises often produce, uh, they sometimes, I just say sometimes produce political revolutions, which I mean a redrawing of constitutions. Because what a fiscal crisis is, is the, is the following. It's um, the government has made certain promises to its entitlement holders, to its debt holders, to its taxpayers. And those promises are not credible because they're not feasible. They don't fit together. So, so, like in, so an example would be in the United States today, our political system has promised people low taxes into the future and high government benefits. And those are not, they don't fit together. Um, so some of those promises are going to have to be broken. And, um, and how they're going to be broken is going to have to be decided by a political system. And um, so there's some political systems that are incapable of resolving those things. And um, when things get to that situation, what has happened historically is people have gotten together and ripped up old constitutions and, and rewritten new ones. And rewritten the new ones in a way that's designed to resolve the fiscal crisis. So I'm going to give you some examples of that. So I have great, some, some great examples. The French Revolution, which is too scary to go into. Um, I'm going to talk about the second American Revolution. Because I don't know if you know that we had two revolutions. Um, one against Great Britain and then the other against our first constitution. So we've had two constitutions, which worked very differently. And I want to tell you about those constitutions. I want to tell you why the first one got abandoned. That's where I'm going to go. And those things are going to illustrate the principles that we, talk, we just talked about. Is that OK? Oh, so you don't want to know this. OK. So I'm going to tell you about a um, little bit of US history. Um, so this history, by the way, is known by, this history is known by leaders in Europe today, like uh, Gerhard Schroeder, who alludes to this history. And you'll, you'll see why. <clears throat> So here's the deal. Um, 
we Americans were also um, colonies of the um, same people you were colonies of, the British. Um, and we fought a war of revolution, um, a war of independence between 1776 and 1781 um, or 1783. It was a terrible war. It was actually a civil war because half the Americans wanted to stay with the British. That's not... Okay, so the war was very expensive. The way we financed it, um, well, in, in several ways. We, we printed a lot of money. Um, <clears throat> we had... The war was fought by 13 individual colonies that, that thought, after independence, they thought they were 13 independent countries, 13 countries. And they hated central governments. That's why they got rid of the king and the parliament. So they wanted 13 separate governments, and they got together and they formed a continental congress. It was a very weak central government um, that uh, they, they that they used to govern the community during the war, but it was extremely weak. The way they financed the war is the 13 separate states issued government debts. We were in a currency union with a country very much like the United States and Zimbabwe today, a country that we were in a currency union with, couldn't care less. It was Spain. We used the Spanish dollar as our currency. It was a silver, it was a silver coin. So we were in a currency union. Our debts were denominated in Spanish dollars. Okay, so we, we fought this war. The 13 individual states issued debts um, in Spanish dollars. The um, central government also issued debts. That's it. And we came out of the war with big debts. We won the war. There's 13 independent states, and they set up a constitution, and it's our first constitution. And I think of this constitution as Ronald Reagan's dream. It's a constitution that is designed to uh, starve the beast. You've heard that expression? It creates a central government. It's designed to create a central government that can't tax, it can't spend, and it can't borrow. So, so here's the institutions that are set, set up. This is called the Articles of Confederation. It is our constitution. You can go read it online. The central government, uh, in those days, there was one main tax. Um, it's, the United States is a very poor country. It's one main tax. It's called the, um, the tariff. Um, you could tax people at the border. So the tariff is the main revenue raiser. Um, there's 13 different tariffs. The central government has no ability to levy the tariff. Every state has its own ability. So those are sovereign states. The 13 states can print their own money if they want. The central government has no ability to tax. What it can do is it can ask the states for contributions. And the states can say yes or no. They usually say no. Well, New York, New York says, I would like to help you. But why don't you go to Massachusetts first? <laughs> so that's what happens. So this is a central government that can't raise revenues. So meanwhile, it's got these big debts that were inherited during the war. How they were incurred is very interesting. Most of them are to, to domestic people. Some are to foreigners. And uh, we're not paying those debts, and we're not paying the interest on the debt, and the interest is rolling up. So in the 1780s, um, the U.S. debt is, um, is not being serviced. And guess what happens? To, what do you think happens to U.S. bond prices? They fall like a rock, and they're selling it for 10 or 20 cents on the dollar. And if you're a hedge fund guy, um, you might ask, is this a good deal? 10 or 20 cents on the dollar. Of course, the interest isn't being paid. Okay, but they're 10, 20, 10 or 20 cents. So that's what it is. So you see the picture? Now you kind of ask, is there a fiscal crisis during the 1780s? Now imagine we're doing a survey here and I ask you, is there a fiscal crisis? And Ronald Reagan's there. And he says, no. This is a government that's working like it's supposed to. It can't tax, it can't spend, it can't borrow. If it can't borrow, it's not going to be able to get in, in, do big government things. And uh, what about the bondholders? And he would say something, I don't know, I'm so sorry about them. And he said, but, but think of the tax... He would say, think of the taxpayers. It's mourning in America. 
and stuff like that. Okay, now I go ask a, I go ask a bondholder, and he says, this is a fiscal crisis. And he says, he said, we should be ashamed. We borrowed this money, and um, we're not paying it back. We're a basket case. <clears throat> you know, and if, if we had a time machine in the future, we'd be calling ourselves Argentina or something like that and making fun of ourselves. Okay, so whether there's a fiscal crisis doesn't, okay. So here's what happens. Our founding fathers, or they, we call them our founding fathers, they were sworn to support this constitution. We had this constitution. They didn't like this outcome. They didn't, we had a very weak central government um, for various reasons. Like we couldn't, there's various people who said the following. The British, guess what? As soon as we uh, declared independence, we were, part, like you, we were part of the British imperial system, and we had various benefits from being in that. We had reduced tariffs and stuff. Uh, the British were not very understanding. When we had this war of independence, they kicked us out of the imperial system, and they started discriminating against American ships and American commerce. Um, and various Americans said, they can't do this to us. Let's retaliate with our tariffs. Okay, fine. You've got 13 different tariffs. Boston, Massachusetts tries to retaliate, and guess what? Um, Rhode Island, who's right next door, said, this is great. Uh, we'll defect, and the British will come to us. So what happened was they couldn't, they couldn't retaliate. So various people who, were, who wanted a government that can tax, spend, borrow, and retaliate against the British, they got together behind closed doors, and they had a second American Revolution. This isn't the way it's taught in high school, but if, when I get to be in charge, this is the way it's going to be taught. This is a second American Revolution. And these guys were traitors. They were sworn to support the Articles of Confederation, Ronald Reagan's Constitution, and they, they, uh, they, what they did is they met in Philadelphia. They met behind closed doors. Talk about transparency. They promised they would never uh, reveal what they had said behind those closed doors. And uh, they kept that promise with one exception. George Washington violated it on one occasion. But nobody said what they did behind those closed doors um, until after everyone was dead, 50 years later. And so the first thing they did is they took the U.S. Constitution, the article that they ripped it apart, uh, and they wrote a new constitution, by which they meant who decides what, when, 